Hey guys, thanks for tuning us in for this 37th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests for this episode include country artist Chloe Collins, singer and songwriter Eric Burgett, and actor and author James S. Murray. If you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and share with your friends. Our first guest is Chloe Collins. We'll be talking about her latest single and her latest releases as well. And first off, Chloe, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Now, now, Chloe, tell us uh, a little bit about the the music background. I mean, you're you're still relatively young of age, and uh, so so where how young did you start off uh, knowing that music was uh, what you wanted to do for your life? Yeah, well, I've been writing songs since I was eight, but I've been singing, I think, before I could talk even. <laughs> um, music was a big part of my family. My parents always played John Mayer, the Beatles. They had, like, really good taste, which helped. Um, and they would just play it around the house. And so I would just sing to those records, and it's just, like, in my blood now. So I, it's been a while. But, um, but yeah, I started writing at eight after I saw the Hannah Montana movie. Still a big fan. <laughs> um, and it just kind of took off from there. There's no judgment here. Hannah Montana fans are are are, are welcome. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> now, who, uh, where did you get your your styles from? I, I heard you mention John Mayer, and obviously the 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 guitarist, the guitarist and uh, and songwriter in him obviously matches up. But who else uh, really inspires you? Yeah, I mean, so many different artists from all different genres, too, because between my parents uh, playing me music, like, as I said, John Mayer and the Beatles, and then I listen to pop and country and rap, like, I listen to every single genre just because I want to know, you know, what's out there. Uh, and I'm into 80s music, like, just literally everything. Uh, some of my favorite artists are Marin Morris and Billie Eilish. They're like my two top faves, I would say, other than Taylor Swift, of course. <laughs> I feel like that's just like an unsaid, obvious <laughs> inspiration. Um, but uh, but yeah, and it's funny because those two, Billie and Marin, are so different from each other. And I think that kind of shows why my songwriting is like every song I write is just so different from the next one because I just listen to so many different types of music that it's just like, it comes out after I listen to a certain thing. So it's just kind of random like that. Now, how do you, where, where is the, the, the process narrowing it down to, to what the next single for you is? Uh, how do you, how do you decide which is going to be the next single? Is it, is it just by the, the gut or the heart, if you will? It definitely depends. I, do have favorites of my own songs. (laughs) Like I know which ones I like better than others, but I have recently been going by fan reaction because on TikTok I've been posting my songs and they've been getting uh, kind of a lot of attention on there, which has been super exciting. But so I post like these acoustic previews on there that are just like a minute long and people comment and I want to see like what gets more comments than other songs. And then I'll kind of go by that. So I'm going by like what I like because I like all of them because I wrote them and like I finished them. But I also want to see what other people want to hear. So kind of a combination. There you go. And uh, the, the the last single, Didn't Want You, was was one for me that uh, that really stuck out. And uh, how do you quantify maybe did, did that release maybe uh, open up some doors that uh, that hadn't been opened before? Oh, I think definitely. Yeah, I remember even writing that with uh, Smith Curry and Tiffany Goss. And that was like, I haven't released that many songs that are co-written. I've usually just write songs, uh, release songs that I wrote myself. But this one I felt was just really special and uh, just different, you know, just not something that you would typically hear on country radio. And I wanted to put it out there and see what people thought. And I thought the production was a little bit, you know, uh, strange as well, didn't totally fit a certain mold uh and people really responded to it way more than i was even expecting and like and even more so i was like well i think this is pretty cool but i didn't realize people like really just like calling me up saying wow this is really great i'm like thank you like that's so amazing but yeah i really think it opened doors especially with radio like um it got so much play and just 
it got on uh, CMT. The music video was, it was my first official music video I'd ever made. And it was featured on CMT. And that was so exciting. And yeah, it just, it went so far for like, I was not expecting that at all, but I'm so glad it happened. Now, where does that, where does that set the bar for, for future releases as well? Yeah, I think it's always tough because you want to like top the last thing you did. Um, and all my songs are so different. I'm like, well, I don't know if people like this, but here we go. <laughs> um, but I, I think I just kind of wanted to go in that vein of, you know, not exactly center, like just a little bit strange, a little bit like dark sounding, kind of spooky, just something that's not really typical. And a lot of my songs do have that sound. So I was like, you know what, let me just try that and see, because people seem to like that with Didn't Want You. So then I put out like Partner in Crime and I'm putting out more songs that are a little just on that darker side. Um, Because yeah, because I feel like that got a response that was bigger than some of my other ones that did sound more like typical country, like, you know, a band, whatever. And this one just had some like strange, like strings and synths, like just things you wouldn't expect on a country record. So, and it was fun to make too. So I love doing it. And and has this year, has the inspiration this year all been dark too? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny because this year has been like the strangest for everyone. I think that's like a collective opinion. Um, but yeah, it's just been, it's so strange because no one really knows what's going on. And, you know, I'm at home alone a lot because I'm not seeing people as much. And, uh, I've written so many songs alone and it's actually been great for inspiration because I've had time to, you know, think about things, but, uh, I think it definitely is on the darker side for themes. I, I just wrote a love song and that's the first time in like six months. <laughs> it's just, it's been a while. <laughs> and, and Chloe, for you, the, the, the Facebook lives, we talked about, uh, you doing those earlier as well. Did, uh, what did you learn from doing those and, and how hard was the first one whenever you're waiting and, uh, and not not exactly sure what kind of response to even get. Yeah, it it was definitely an adjustment because I had been doing live shows, you know, in bars and things like that for, you know, four to five times a week, every week. And to go from that to like playing songs from my bedroom, it was a little strange. And like Facebook, you know, I wouldn't log in right. And then I'd be late to the thing or like I'd go on the wrong account or just it was such a mess in the beginning because I didn't really know what I was doing. But I think I definitely got the hang of it quickly. And like, um Instagram lives and TikTok lives. Now I do TikTok lives like every week and stuff. And it's just it's funny how that is our entire world now. And you could have never imagined that a few months ago. <laughs> like I would have called you crazy if you told me that. <laughs> now now what is the what is the technological thing that you've learned this year that you'll apply moving forward as well? That's a good question. I So much, actually, because I've done uh, rights over Zoom and Skype and things like that. And it's almost more efficient because you don't have to, you know, drive an hour to their house. And then, you know, all the little things that you don't think about and even playing the shows on Facebook Live and TikTok and things like that. You know, I don't drive to the venue. I don't have to pay for parking. I don't have to, you know, carry my guitar into the bar and, you know, sound check, right? Everything that was such, it was like, it was almost time consuming compared to what it is now. Like I just turn on my phone end of story (laughs) like that is that is all you have to do and it's it's kind of nice and I like it and now people are even more people are tuning into my lives than we're even coming to my shows you know which is so funny to me because I was thinking oh it'll be like you know one or two people but yeah there's like 30 or 40 people coming to my TikTok lives every week and I'm like you know this would be cool if like 40 people were coming to see me play at these (laughs) you know national writers rounds when I was actually like you know hauling all my gear there and stuff (laughs) but whatever (laughs) that's awesome now Chloe if folks want to find out more information about about your new releases about uh, those TikTok lives any of that stuff and uh, upcoming tour dates as uh, as we look forward to those eventually, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, everything is just under Chloe Collins Music. 
Uh, that's spelled with two C's and not two K's because I'm not a Kardashian. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, but I, yeah, I have an Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my TikTok is also Chloe Collins Music. Uh, and yeah, I do lives on there every Monday at 7.30 p.m. Central. So if you want to come hear some original tunes, <laughs> that's usually where I play them first. All right. Well, Chloe, it has been great to to officially meet you for the first time. Uh, I met you via the Facebook Live, but uh, appreciate your time and uh, also continued success. And uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Yes, thank you. And thank you for having me. Again, follow her on all socials at Chloe Collins Music. All right, guys, our next podcast guest is uh, Eric Burgett. And uh, Eric, you know, as soon as you connected on the uh, on the Zoom, I-, I saw the background. I was like, hey, I recognize that. Uh, the- did a Facebook Live for us early on in the pandemic, uh, right from that uh, from from that studio, we'll call it. Yes, sir, man. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> back, I guess. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Eric, for you, the uh, releasing a new single at this time, I mean, h- how crazy is that to, to, to look at the marketing aspect of this uh, this time around? Well, man, it's been awesome, Cameron. I mean, this song specifically, um, like, I feel like this song being a love song and especially something, a, a song that's so important to – my myself and my wife it was the first dance song at our wedding and um i just feel like i I see a lot of folks getting married during this time they're still going through with it they're still doing their thing whether it has to be virtually they do a (laughs) ceremony and they do a bigger thing later on um some folks have already used the song as a first dance uh so it's been really cool to to see that happen i feel like love is just going around during this time and um nothing like a love song during this time there you go Personal. There you go. Now, now for you, the uh, the the being a newlywed, you're still newlywed. What uh, what what challenges has has that placed on uh, this whole COVID experience? <laughs> uh, my wife and I, we, we we look at it like we're you know through anything in life. Like no matter what happens, like we're just we're in it together. And she and I are uh, hanging with our dog at home. We love it. <laughs> we're uh, we're going on little road trips whether it be to like a little cabin out outside of nashville or or going up to the family farm we've spent a lot of time together but uh lately we've we've actually just bought a house so Mm -hmm. it's been a crazy experience with with renovating the house and uh it's it's been awesome for us anyway so have you have you found this is something i've asked uh i've asked writers and and songwriters especially is has this year been uh, harder or easier for you to find inspiration? For me personally, it's it goes it goes up and down, man. Like um, I feel like every day I try to put something down on paper. I say on paper, but it's like a voice memo in my phone. Like I just whether it's like a piano riff or a couple lyrics as I'm driving, I just it's my morning voice. I'm like sounding like crap. Like I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> like singing something random that comes in my head. I always make sure I capture those moments because it's like magic no matter what. Um, and I don't know. Most, most times it's been, it's been better. I think, I don't know if that's just because of what's going on and you're always seeking for, I don't know. You're always looking for something. <laughs> and I see you standing there in front of the keyboard and I love listening to you tickle the eye for ease, if you will. What, uh, what d- different challenges has playing the keys been uh, doing, g- getting your start? Cause I know most guys just carrying around a guitar though. They're, they're pretty mobile. Uh, a, key, a set of keys, a, a little less mobile. Yeah. Uh, when I was looking for a keyboard to be somewhat mobile, like a guitar, um, I found one that has a backpack carrying case, Um, you know, virtual radio tour looks a little different (laughs) this year. So it's kind of nice to just have this thing still. Mm -hmm. But but, uh, last year when I was touring around to radio stations, I had my backpack carrying case. I'd roll into the studios and set it up. But um, it's it's been fine for me. But uh, growing up, you know, I was hauling a big 88 key keyboard bar to bar, just playing acoustic <laughs> shows. And, uh, I roll into this bar in the middle of nowhere and people, I get, I get looks. I kind of like it. I'm like, that's, you know, 
yeah, I got a keyboard. I'm going to play it for you. And I play some honky tonk and, and get them dancing. So then by the end of the night, we all be friends. It's, it's not the size <laughs> of the dog in the fight. It's the fight in the dog, right? Exactly, man. <laughs> now, now tell us the, uh, the, the process of the new single and uh, I'm going to let you give us a, a little intro and, and I'm just going to sit here and watch you play some keys and sing, man. Sweet Cameron. Yeah. Uh, so the song is called sometimes late at night. Um, I put this one out uh, back in August. I absolutely love this song. It's one of my favorite songs that I've written. Uh, I wrote it with my two buddies, Tony Wood and Matt McClure. Uh, Matt and I go way back. Uh, honestly, he and I grew up in the same neck of the woods up in Illinois, where, mm-hmm. where we're both from. And he grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm. Uh, so long story short, he and I connect really well um, as artist and producer. So, And then our buddy Tony Wood... Um, he is an amazing writer, has a lot of credits to his name Mm -hmm. in the Christian, uh, music field and country field. And, um, this song came about in a writing session. It was actually pretty close to my wedding date two years ago. Uh, I was supposed to, let's see, when was it? It was like two months before my wedding. I think it was. And I, I I hit him with the idea. I was like, Hey y'all, what about, this song being our being a first dance song for my wedding, I want to surprise my wife with it, and and we went with it and wrote it. You know, here I was with two married dudes. You know, <laughs> they love their wife so much. I, I admire them. I want to. I love my wife. My at that time, I, she was my fiance. I love love my fiance. I want to be these guys are role models to mm-hmm. me, and the way they show their affection for their wives, and um, so. We all, we all three wrote the heck out of it, man, and uh, it just felt so good to have that product and being there the night of my wedding, dancing to it with my wife, and for the first time, it's like awesome. <laughs> That's good stuff. It doesn't get much better than that. No, man, no. So I hope a lot of folks can connect to this, and if you haven't found your loved one yet, maybe maybe this song will mean something completely different to you later on down the line. There so. you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's called Sometimes Late at Night. Sometimes late at night When I'm sleeping I find myself awake And it feels like I'm the one who's dreaming Sometimes late at night I see you lying there I know I found the answer To my prayer I got a heart full of dreams and Say I think too much I don't believe I could take it here In a world without your touch For everything that's wrong in life When I got you by my side I know it's all gonna be alright It's so clear Sometimes late at night Beside me in the dark You don't see it's enough to heal my heart. I watch a little smile and moonlight move across your face. And when I hear you breathe, this noisy world seems so far away. I got a heart full of dreams and fears. You say I worry, say I think too much. I don't believe I can take it.
I didn't want to interrupt any of the fade down. That was just too good, man. That's good stuff. Man. <laughs> now, now the, the the next question for you the, uh, the the music process the songwriting what is what is first for you is it is, is it lyrics is it uh, is it melody is it a hook what what is the first part of uh, of the inspirational process for you most times it's uh, melody most times it's melody I'll say like I'll I think if you go through my phone my voice memos it's it's mainly like me humming a song. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> just like something like that or like mm, 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 mm. just like <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then somehow or another and I think you know when you listen to something as a you know first at, at first listen um, I don't know it's I feel like uh, the melody works with the lyric the lyric works with the melody and no matter how it's done for like whether it's lyric first or melody first you put yourself in a room with people to write with, um, and the collaboration process is amazing. It's magical. Um, something like lyric matches with the melody, melody matches with the lyric, and it just all kind of goes together. So I find that lyric eventually with that melody. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, do you, uh, do you, let me say how to, how to go. The, uh, the the song process the, the the latest single is the is the latest single is that always your favorite uh, the, the write that you've had or or do you have some other song rights back there that still have uh, extra special places for you? Man, I I love the collaboration process in Nashville so much. Um, I've I, I I've I'm looking back, I always get something out of out of every right I'm with, and, and that's just the people I'm with, because I, I surround myself with way more talented people than I am, so it's <laughs> like, I, I I just, I soak it all in, I, I learn from every little right, whether it's like an hour-long right, or a 20-minute right, that we're getting back together to finish a song that we have been writing for like eight hours or something. Um, the, the song that I have out, the single I have out now on radio is like, it's just... I love it so much because it's it's my life. It's like you know it's my wife and I's special song. But um, I feel like every song I put out, I feel like I get better and better. I don't know. It's like yeah, as it should. I think it should feel like that. <laughs> you hope so, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> now, who is who was the first uh, influence to music in your life? Um, my brother Elliot, uh, my older brother Elliot. He's He's a farmer. He's a really good dude. He's my older brother. I, I grew up in a family of six. Uh, my mom and dad, my, my sister and my two brothers. And uh, my older brother, Elliot, like he, he taught me how to drive a truck, drive a tractor. And, and more than anything, he, he got me loving the piano. There was this baby grand piano we have in my parents' house, and it's still there. It's the most out of tune it's ever been. I'm trying to <laughs> go home and tune it, but every time I'm home, I just can't get to it because tuning a piano takes like mm-hmm. an hour or something, and you know that's an hour wasted if I don't <laughs> talk to family and hang right. out and ride the tractor or something. But um, now Elliot, he's a couple years older than I am, and I, I was let's see, four years old, and I jumped off the tractor, climbed up on the piano bench, <laughs> and he was he was doing. I think he was playing Come Go With Me by the uh, Beach Boys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it had that whole like... Uh, that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> like that whole bebop kind of thing. And he, he was playing it and uh, I was like, I want to play that. So I got up and I was just like... I was just picking out notes and then he kind of <laughs> showed me the melody and then from then... Uh, it was magic from there, and yeah, he definitely got me started on the piano, man, and, and I started taking lessons and all that stuff. So, so do you still play by ear or mainly by music? Both, both. I started playing by ear, and it was a big part of my growing up. And then when I got enrolled in private, like classical piano lessons, um, it like I, I realized I could do both worlds. I was like, mm-hmm. I could play in like a little rock band on the side and then later on down the road it was my country cover band in college and i would be listening to songs on radio and play it and uh then i also had the classical music approach and a lot of people are like 
what's this country guy like playing classical piano? Like I put out like this thing <laughs> called a Bushlight Sonata. It's mm-hmm. really a take on Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. It's really just the same thing. I just put a bush light on the piano. And <laughs> so I found creative ways to kind of mesh my brand with, with that. But, right. um, yeah, uh, but I can read music and I, you know, it's, it's also, it's, it's led me to kind of doing side gigs here and there in Nashville and supporting myself financially. Like I used to play piano for the Nashville ballet mm-hmm. actually here and, wow. uh, I would, pull out those old piano books that I grew up learning out of and I'd make some money doing that in in addition to my country shows yeah, so, that's cool now what <laughs> what have you focused in on to uh, what what have you been honing the, the the part of your craft this year that you've had the extra time uh piano chops definitely yeah. um I grew up you know doing a lot of piano boogie woogie stuff but uh <laughs> I wanted to take that further down the line and like actually learn solos of other uh like country songs mm-hmm. and stuff uh one of the songs i learned earlier this year that i learned the piano lick to was uh sold by john michael yeah. montgomery yeah. <laughs> so i learned the second verse like piano riffs and stuff from the record and um just it's really a combination of like learning the boogie woogie country riffs and stuff and then training my ear more and that's that's really been really cool to me. So. Well, well, that's cool, and uh, I know we're getting close on time, but uh, I I just I'd love to watch you play and and hear you play and sing. If you got anything else for us, yeah, man, I'll do I'll do one of my earlier singles that I put out this year. Um, it's off my EP. The EP is called Pass It On. Mm-hmm. Um, I put that out last year, and then we put out a single from that record um, out earlier this year, back in March or April, I think it was. Losing track of time now through all this whole thing. <laughs> but this is a fun song I want to share with y'all, and uh, it's all about how I was raised. So this one's called Raised. Four wheels plowing fields, diesel purring, love the smell of moonshine, made with water from the well. Pine rolls, gravel rolls, fence line buzzing, love the sound of cricket lullabies. Till the sun comes back around, hammer in one hand, ham sandwich in the other. When it comes to all this corn, I'm just another shucker. Raised <laughs> on biscuits and gravy, that brick church has saved me. Where the choir sings, oh hallelujah. I'm raised way off the interstate. With tractors and hay, hey, 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 I love the sunshine, love the rain, love me for the dirt, it's a damn good day. That's how I was raised. Hammer in one hand, ham sandwich in the other. When it comes to all this corn, I'm just another shepherd. Raised on biscuits and gravy, that brick church has saved me. Where the choir sings, oh hallelujah. Raised way off the interstate with tractors and hay.
<laughs> well, Eric, I always uh, want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can keep up with uh, the, the new single, the EP, uh, upcoming concerts. Uh, I know we're still hoping uh, some of that scheduling fills back out as well. Where's the, the best place to keep up with all of that? Absolutely, Cameron. Uh, EricBurgett.com. Uh, I'm putting out a bunch of digital releases um, online every like six weeks, and we're excited to be putting out some brand new music, so keep in touch there. Um, shows, I hope they pick up. Hope they can come out to OK and see y'all and uh, hang out. So Look forward to that. Well, Eric, again, uh, thank you so much for your time, brother. I've been a big supporter of your music. Uh, had the chance to watch you a couple years ago in Nashville. We never were able to see face-to-face this first face-to-face meeting. So, uh, Eric, absolutely great to Thanks, see you man. face to get face-to-face, my friend. And uh, best of success. Look forward to visiting again real soon. Thanks, Cameron. Our final guest on this episode is James S. Murray. You know him just simply as Murr from the Impractical Jokers. He's got a new book, Don't Move. James S. Murray on the line and uh, esteemed author, I would say now. And uh, Murr, first off, thanks so much for taking the time to be back on the show. Oh, my pleasure, man. I love coming back. Now, the, the new book, I mean, how surprised are you by the, the amount of, uh, uh, of published material you have now out there? This, this is a special one for me. It's a, I have a brand new book that just came out this week. It's called Don't Move. It is the scariest, most exciting, action-packed book you'll read this fall. It is perfect in time for Halloween, and it will scare the heck out of you in a great way. Uh, it, this is a special one because it's the first book I've written – Outside of the trilogy that I just had, the Awakened trilogy, uh, it, it's its own standalone thriller. So you pick it up; it's immensely readable. You cannot put it down. It grabs you literally from the first chapter, which is shocking, and it doesn't let you go. And you love the characters, and you root for them, and you you can't wait to see how it turns out. And we've got great twists and turns throughout. And the ending will knock your socks off. You're gonna love it. It's called Don't Move. Now, now for you, uh, James, where do you find the, the, the inspiration for the characters? I know we've talked about the storylines before, but where do you, where do you pull characters from? The, the main character in our book, uh, her name is Megan Forrester. She, I love her. She, she's my favorite character. I think we've ever written, uh, she, because she's, uh, I drew for my own life. Uh, she, she is in the book, uh, the, the general manager at a place called Hunt's Place, uh, distribution center, which is the largest distribution center in the United States. They literally like one third of the country's food and produce and meat and poultry and dairy go through this facility. And she is this super sharp logistical problem solver. Yet in the book, she has one moment of weakness that sets her on the course of the entire book. And she spends the entire book trying to get back to who she was before this kind of horrific accident. And she's uh, by the end faced with the same situation as the beginning of the book and has to pull from the strength from within herself to overcome it the second time around. She's a great, interesting, complex character that is, uh, makes smart decisions, which I like, I kind of hate when characters don't make rational, smart decisions. And she, and she tries to overcome her demons. You're going to love her. And and James, as you, you talked about this being released uh, before Halloween, obviously great timing on that. Uh, h- how much do you enjoy the Halloween season and and the spookiness? And I, I know you're into the, the the horror sci-fi side of things as well. Yeah, I, I love Halloween, but I, I I'm getting dressed up this uh, Saturday as uh, um, the characters in Twilight because I finally got around to watching it during quarantine. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be Edward from twilight. I'm going to pale my face. I've red contacts lenses and then I have, uh, I have a wig that looks just like, uh, you know, a uh, Robert Pattinson, Patterson. So it's going to be great fun. But I, I do love the season, but I've been hurt in Halloween before. I went years and years and years ago, like 20 years ago, I was invited to a party. I had a crush on a girl all the time and she said, everyone is in costume. And by the time I arrived an hour later, Everyone had changed out of their costume, so I was the only <laughs> one in costume. And I was dressed as an army guy with, uh, with you know, face paint on, green face paint, and it was impossible to get off. And I felt like a fool. And uh, and I'll, 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 that's why I'll never dance again. <laughs> <laughs> now, now have the have the other guys have have any of them been uh, been uh, maybe a, a slight twinge of inspiration for any of the characters that you've had? 
they, they've all been in my books. No joke. I write the guys in uh, to every book. And honestly, it's an, uh, if you get killed in one of my books, it's an honor. We only <laughs> kill the people we love. <laughs> you know? I guess they're crimes of passion in that sense. Uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I, I, I will gladly kill the guys in every book I write. <laughs> there you go. Now, now, James, during the, the the pandemic, has has that been a time as far as writing? Uh, has has the inspiration been been better for you, or or has it maybe been a, a little tighter for you? I think it's been better. I, a couple of things happened. So, uh, you know, I just got married a few weeks ago, and uh, and a, y- a year ago, my wife and I moved to uh, way out into the suburbs, like and it's just like really dark and woods around us and everything. And I have never lived that way. I've been in Brooklyn and Manhattan for long time in Staten Island, and it's most definitely not that. So I, I, that combined with, of course, being locked in the house for six, seven months, like all of us have been, um, creates, and the state of the world itself creates this, for all of us, this existential dread that you feel on a daily basis. And I think that is a, a, honestly a good place to draw inspiration from. In the book, in Don't Move, you'll feel that kind of isolation and dread as this uh, church, group, church group from the Bronx is stuck and wanders into the wrong forest in West Virginia. They are alone and isolated. They are not where they think they are, and they're being hunted by this kind of terrifying prehistoric arachnid. And you feel this isolation from each other. They don't trust each other. For, it, 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 I think it is a product of this time. We wrote it during quarantine. And for for you, what if obviously so many things you've had to change uh, the the way you've done things? How how have uh, the things that you've changed? Uh, how is that going to maybe? Is there anything that you've learned this year that uh, that you're going to stick with uh, the the new way, if you will? I, I tell you, one of the best things that came out of this time. Obviously, I missed my friends dearly. I haven't I haven't not seen them this long in in thirty years. And um, one of the best things that came out of it, uh, with a silver lining, if you will, was that. We missed each other. We missed having dinner together. So we created a TV show called Impractical Joker's Dinner Party, where the four of us have dinner every Thursday night on Zoom, and we put it on television, on True TV. It, uh, the new season, so we played it throughout the summer, and we had guests join us for dinner. We had uh, Jeff Daniels and Ed Harris. And this season, we have other mi- big, big stars joining, and new episodes start next Thursday night on True TV again. That was one of my favorite things that came out of the pandemic. Um, for uh, in terms of like a creative burst, and thankfully, the uh, guys and I literally a few weeks ago um, were able to start filming *Impractical Jokers* again, the flagship show. So that that's really exciting that we're we're back. It is different and kind of unusual. We had to change the format for the show a bit to still make it producible, but that's the great thing about *Jokers* is that we do adapt and change the format every single season, no matter what. Anyway, so we just had to kind of get a little bit more creative with it. There you go. And again, uh, I want to make sure and let our listeners know where to to follow everything you got social media wise and uh, finding the book as well. Uh, I mean, don't move. You can get right now anywhere books are sold on Amazon, Barnes and Noble or your local booksellers. Uh, if you want an autographed copy of Don't Move, all you have to do is go to meetmer.com, M-E-E-T, meetmer.com, and you get an autographed copy or jamesmurrayofficial.com. There you go. Well, James, always great to visit with you, my friend. I I wish we had more time, but uh, uh, hopefully you have a great rest of your week, my friend. Thanks, Cameron. Great talking to you. Again, thanks for joining us for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, feel free to click the support tab and follow the instructions. If you have a special guest idea, feel free to email me, gqwithcam at gmail.com. We'll be back with a full episode number 38 coming up tomorrow. <laughs>